This video is brought to you by Aeroparts.com. In this video, I'm going to be replacing the driver's side front wheel hub bearing in a 2008 Lexus IS350 rear wheel drive. This is identical for the 250 rear wheel drive and pretty similar for the Lexus ISF. This tutorial will also be very useful for most rear wheel drive vehicles that have a Bolton style wheel hub bearing. Now the only reason why I made this video really is to show you how easy it is to do this. If you could change brakes, you could change your wheel hub bearing. So if you've been contemplating doing this, the answer is yeah, you can do it. It's not that hard. There is however one caveat to doing this and that is rust. If you have a lot of rust underneath your vehicle, I would prepare for a fight to remove that wheel hub bearing. Of course using penetrating oil, a big hammer, a slide hammer, prying it, are all different ways to get a fused or stuck wheel hub bearing off. Now worst case scenario, if you still can't get it no matter what you do, you're gonna have to remove the knuckle and it's gonna have to be put in the press anyways. I don't feel like it's fair to make a how-to video without at least explaining what could go wrong. But as you can see from this current shot, these are all the bolts that are coming off. You can see the caliper bolts, and you can also see the wheel hub bearing bolts. All of the bolts are 17 millimeter, all the same size, and all of them were in that previous shot. You can see how I'm using the hammer to remove that 17 millimeter bolt with my ratchet. I don't always recommend that method, but this ratchet has taken quite a bit of abuse. You can, you can damage the mechanism for doing that, but just a technique that I use and just a heads up from using that technique as well. Now I have the caliper bolts off and I'm going to be removing the caliper. Now I'm not disconnecting it from the brake line. I'm going to suspend the caliper so it doesn't hang from the brake line. Now I used a couple of jack stands to support my caliper because I had a few of them laying around and they seem to work just fine. But any method is really fine, a bungee cord, a hanger, putting it on top of a box or something like that. They're all fine as long as the caliper is not being suspended from the brake line. I'm also replacing the brakes and rotors on this car, so I'm not worried about getting them dirty, but if you're going to be reusing them, make sure to keep them clean. Now, if your brake rotor is fused to your wheel hub, which is very common, the proper way to remove it is by using a brake rotor or drum tool, which is basically just an M8 by 1.25. It's kind of a standard size for a lot of different rotors, and screw it in, and the rotor will come out as you screw it in. You can also hammer it, but if you plan on reusing your rotor, I would reconsider. I'm going to remove the ABS sensor. This one was a little bit tough, so I'm prying it very gently with my pry bar. Very gently is the key word. While I'm holding the locking tab down with my other screwdriver, and I'm just going to pull it off as usual. Now I'm going to remove the four 17 millimeter bolts using the same method that I used to remove the caliper bolts. This one I'm using a wrench and a hammer. Got those bolts off now. I have a new wheel hub bearing here. I'm going to check that lug pattern to make sure it's identical to the old one. Now I have to hammer off the wheel hub bearing. They're all fused at some point. You're going to have to hammer it off no matter what. This car has almost no rust, so it really only took a few whacks to get it off. This car had no rust, but if you have a lot of rust, it's going to take a whole lot more than this to get it off, so be prepared for that. Now we have the dust shield. This is the direction that it goes. It only goes one direction. It's really hard to mess this up. But if you did, hey, mistakes happen, just take a look at the video. This is the direction that it goes.
once you have everything off it's a really good idea to clean the inside of the knuckle i highly recommend doing this this car really didn't need much at all but if you have a lot of rust again make sure to clean it up very nicely before you put that new wheel hub bearing on now i'm going to install the new wheel hub bearing you're going to put your dust shield behind the wheel hub bearing just like this don't forget your dust shield it's one of those very simple steps that you can forget and if you did forget it you're going to have to take your wheel hub bearing back off put the dust shield on now I'm going to start putting the four 17 millimeter wheel hub bearing bolts back on. These call for 51 foot pounds of torque and using blue Loctite on them is not a bad idea. Once you're done tightening your wheel hub bearing bolts and you go to put your caliper back on, the two 17 millimeter caliper bolts call for 58 foot pounds of torque. Using blue Loctite on the caliper bolts is not a bad idea as well. And that is it. The only thing left is to put the rotor back on, the caliper, tighten your wheel down to 76 foot pounds. Those are the lug nut torque specs for the wheels, and that's it. You're done. If this video helped you out, give it a like. And if you want to see more similar content, make sure to subscribe. And don't forget to check out AeroParts.com for quality aftermarket parts or OE brands like Denso Bosch and the likes.